In this video, we'll take a look at what happens when the internal rate of return uh, sometimes gives multiple values as your answers. So for example, in this cash flow, let's say you're trying to invest in a particular project that has an initial requirement of uh, $500,000 of cash that you need to sink in in the initial at the very start. And uh, every year thereafter, you earn $281,250 for five years. At the end of the project, you need to sink in another $900,000 uh, for maybe some kind of a environmental cleanup or uh, something of that nature. So in this situation, we can see that the internal rate of return can give multiple values. So I'm just going to give, uh, you know, compute the IRR here. And before that, I'm just going to put some guess interest rate, 5%, 10%, uh, 15%, and 20%. These are just guess values to get the IRR formula started equals IRR values, all these values here. And the guess interest rate is this one right here. And then I close that. And I also need to make sure these have absolute cell references by pressing the F4 button. And I press enter and I copy this formula down. And uh, you can see that the internal rate of return could be either 3% or 28%. <clears throat> and the reason for that is because we have um, this negative sign cash flow here and it occurs twice. So basically the cash flows change their sign once between these two cash flows from negative to positive and once again from these two cash flows from positive to negative. So each time there is a change of sign in the cash flows, you will have a different IRR value show up. So which of these two is a valid IRR? Is it 3% or is it 28%? So it's a bit confusing. So under these conditions, it makes sense to actually use the net present value of your cash flows at various discounts rates. So let's compute that now. I'm going to use 0%, 2%, 4%. I'm just going to you know, just copy this for until 30%. And now I'm going to compute the net present value. The net present value is C3 plus NPV of at the discount rate of E3, the cash flows, all these cash flows, and close the parenthesis. And I'm gonna copy this down. So I also want to put absolute cell referencing for $C, $3, and absolute cell referencing for C4 and C9 as well. And now if I were to copy this down, I can basically compute the net present value of this set of cash flows for various discount rates. So if it turns out that for a project, uh, for this particular project, if your company's uh, you know, hurdle rate or discount rate is say 10%, then if you were to invest in this project, you would earn a net present value of $36,964.47, which is a positive NPV. So your decision if your hurdle rate is 10% is to go ahead with this project because it has a positive NPV. And uh, you can see that uh, the, because the internal rate of return has two different values, you cannot really use that. It's better to use the NPV. Now let's actually plot this NPV values and see why the internal rate of return gives two different values. So let's actually try and uh, draw a graph to see what's happening. I'm selecting this entire region here and I go to insert and I uh, draw a select a scatter with, uh, with, with actually straight lines. And uh, so when you do this, so when you draw this graph, you can see that the net present value uh, becomes zero when the interest rate is somewhere between zero and 5%. And it becomes zero once again, when it is somewhere between 25 and 30%. Now, those are the two values, 3% and 28% where the NPV becomes zero. And if you look at the definition of uh, IRR or internal rate of return, it is that rate of return at which the net present value of your cash flows becomes zero. So the IRR formula is faithfully finding out those values for the rate of return at which the NPV is zero. It so happens that because of the cash flows, the NPV has a curved shape here. And so it becomes zero at around 3% and at around 28%.
And that's what you see here in the IRR. But if you happen to have a particular hurdle rate, like say 10% or 5% or 20%, then you can look at the appropriate net present value and satisfy yourself that it is positive. And if it is, then you can go ahead with the project. So that's how you examine and make a decision about a project that has this kind of unconventional cash flows where there are more than one uh, you know, places where the sign of the cash flows changes. It's changing here from negative to positive. It's changing here from positive to negative. So there are two different places in this cash flow where the sign changes. And so there are two different IRR values. So if there are two or more IRR values, the preferable thing to do is to use a net present value. So thanks for watching. I hope you find this useful. Thank you.